Hello, everyone. How are you today? Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. We're on lesson eight. In lesson eight, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to focus on two things. One, we're going to think about how we can use trees. How do we use trees, right? How do we use the wood in the trees? That's the first thing. And the second thing is how we can save the forest. Can we do both? Yes, we can. That's what we'll find out in this lesson. So, how can we use trees and how can we save the forest? Come with me. Let's take a look. Okay. First of all, we see this here. Many living things live in the forest. So, if we talk about a forest, we know that many living things are in the forest. What things live in the forest? Let's see. Here we have a picture here. Of course, we can see many very, very big trees, right? This is a forest with huge trees. Trees live in the forest, and some trees are really, really big, aren't they? Of course, you see a person here. They're very small. See how small that person is? The person doesn't live in the forest. They're just hiking through, right? But the trees live in the forest. Big trees, small trees, all different kinds of trees live in the forest. What else lives in the forest? We can see, look at this little cute guy right here. It's like a, a little cute squirrel, right? A squirrel lives in the forest. They live in the trees and on the trees. What else? We can see birds. In this case, it's a bald eagle. Birds make their nests in the trees. So birds make their nests in the trees. Birds live in the forest. What else? We have, of course, trees give fruit, right? We have some bananas. Are you hungry? Right? These bananas are ready to eat. The green ones, not ready, right? But a lot of different types of fruits grow in the forest and live in the forest. They're part of the trees, really. What else? We have a very beautiful insect. Do you know this insect's name? That's right, it's a ladybug. A ladybug. So this insect is a ladybug, right? Very beautiful uh, insect. Many insects live in the forest. And what else lives in the forest? A lot of other types of animals. So we have squirrels. In some forests, there are monkeys, especially in, in warmer forests down south, right, where it's very warm. There are many monkeys that live in the trees. There's a lot of different types of animals that live in forests, many different types of animals. Let's take a look closely at our word list for this unit. Uh, what kind of vocabulary will we learn? First of all, we have here a picture, a place with trees and animals, a place with trees and animals. I was just talking about this place. Do you remember what the name of this place is? It starts with an F. Of course, it is a forest. When you say forest, remember with the F, F. Your teeth are on your bottom lip, F. Forest. So this is a forest, a place with trees and animals animals. What's next? Next we have a safe place to be. Remember this cute guy right here? Right? He's looking out from his home. Well, he of course lives in the forest or she, we're not sure, but they live in the forest, this type of animal, and many types of animals will make what inside a tree, right? They will make a shelter shelter. And shelter is the same word, or it's the same meaning, really, for many animals. It's their home, isn't it? Right? So this animal will find shelter in a tree. They'll make it their home. So shelter is like a home for many types of animals in the forest. Okay, what else? We have, what's this boy doing, right? He's holding on to a tree and he's going up into the tree. Here it says to go up like a monkey, right? So if you think about monkeys, we saw the picture before of the monkey. What do monkeys do really well, right? They can go up in the tree very quickly. What is the verb that we use to describe this action? What is this boy doing? He is climbing. Of course, climb is just the root form. Climb, to climb. 
he is climbing the tree. Whoops, he is climbing the tree. The boy is climbing the tree. Can you climb a tree? But be careful, right? Make sure your mother or your father is watching you when you climb the tree. It can be dangerous, so be careful. But he is climbing the tree. Okay. The next, we saw this picture before, right? Here is a bird. Now, a home built by a bird. Before we talked about shelter, right? And we saw the, the squirrel, the, the cute animal, looking out from the shelter. This is a type of shelter, but it's a special word for birds. Only birds make this, right? What do we use for this uh, word? We call it a nest, a nest. So when we set, talk about a nest, you should think, ah, it's a bird, right? A bird makes a nest. And a nest is the home for the bird. It's their shelter. It's also their home. For birds, we say it is a nest. Okay? Interesting. Okay, now we have another type of home, right? We've talked about shelter. We've talked about nest. Now, this is another type of home, and this is an interesting-looking animal here, right? Kind of looks like a dog, but it's not really a dog. It's a different type of animal. And this animal will live in a home in the ground. So many animals will dig in the ground, and they will make their shelter or their home. There's a special word for this. What is it? We say it's a cave, okay? Now, sometimes animals will, will make a small cave, or maybe there's a big cave that they don't make, but they will live in there. What lives in caves? Well, wild dogs, perhaps hyenas. A hyena is a type of dog. A hyena is a type of wild dog in Africa. This looks like a hyena. But also big animals like bears, right? Be careful if you're in the woods and you see a bear. Bears are very big animals and they also live in caves, okay? So a cave is another type of shelter, okay? These are all shelters. A nest is a shelter and a cave is a shelter. Okay, another word that we have here is the plant part. So it's a part of a plant, the part of a plant that holds the seeds. So the seeds, of course, are what the plant makes, and the seeds will go into the ground and make a new plant, right? Seeds are how plants make more plants. What do we call the part of the plant that holds the seeds? We, for many plants, it's called the fruit, right? So bananas are a type of fruit. Apples are a type of fruit. Watermelon, subak, right? That's a type of fruit. And if you look at each of these fruits, they all have seeds in them. And if you take those seeds and you put them in the ground, a new plant will grow, okay? So we call that fruit, okay? Not all plants, but many plants have fruits and that's how they uh, distribute their seeds. Okay, insect. We have an insect here and of course another word for insect is bug. You may know this word from the movies, right? So there's, in English of course, there's a lot of uh, words that have two words that mean the same thing, right? Insect. Insect is more formal. It's a little bit more of a difficult word, isn't it? It's much easier to say bug, bug, right? And that's what insects are. Insects are bugs. And this is an example of a bug, right? So you can say bug or you can say insect. Same thing. What is this? We talked about this before. Do you remember what I said at the beginning of this lecture? This is an animal with long arms, right? He has long arms, right? And a long tail. So a long tail, uh, not just long arms, but also a long tail. And what type of animal is this? Do you remember what I said at the beginning of this lecture? We said monkey. So say it with me, monkey, monkey, okay? So this is an, a monkey and we learned about uh, the monkey. We also, when we looked at the picture with climb, the boy is 
uh, going up the tree like a monkey. Monkeys are very good at climbing, aren't they? So you find monkeys in forests, but not cold forests, not up in Korea. Well, maybe up in Korea. And in Japan, you find monkeys, but also more commonly in the south, where the trees, where the forests are warmer. There's many monkeys that live in the forests in the warmer forests uh, uh, near, uh, in, in the south. Okay. Okay, the next one. A place where people live. We talked about this already uh, in terms of animals, right? We've talked about shelter. We've talked about nests for birds. We talked about caves for wild dogs or bears. But people, where do people live? Of course, we live in a house, right? People build a house, right? You could also say home, but home and house is where somebody lives. House, though, is House means the building. Home is like a place that you're emotionally connected to. This is my home. This is where I live. People can live in an apartment. They can live in a tent. They can live in a cave. Those are all homes, right? But a house is something that's built like this, right? It has doors. It might have a chimney. It has walls that were built by people. So we've seen a lot of different types of shelters because this is also a shelter. So we've seen uh, nest, cave, house. These are all shelters. Okay. Next we have something used to travel on water. Can you walk on water? No, you'll sink, right? Be careful, right? You jump in the water, you will sink. But if you want to travel over water, on top of the water, so you don't sink, what do you travel in? What is this? This, of course, is called a boat. A boat. And some boats are very small, like this. Some boats are very big. They're like hotels, and they go across the water, okay? So something used to travel on water is a boat. Okay, this uh, young girl is doing something very good, right? She's helping her mom out. She is uh, getting rid of some dirty uh, stuff on the ground. So if you say something is not dirty, if it's not dirty, the opposite of dirty, what do we say? It is clean. So clean can be an adjective, right? We can use it as an adjective. It is clean. We can use it as an adjective. The floor is clean. We can also use it as a verb. Please clean the floor. So we can use it in two ways, okay? Uh, as an adjective, it is clean. The floor is clean. Or if mom sees some dirt on the floor, she will say to her daughter, please clean the floor. And that's a verb. Please clean up your room, right? Please clean up your uh, desk, for example, okay? So we can use it as an adjective or as a verb very commonly. Okay, the next one, an animal with feathers and wings. We already talked about this type of animal, right? This type of animal, what type of shelter does it make in the trees? It makes a nest. What is it? Of course, we know it's a bird. And there are many different kinds of birds, right? Many different shapes, different sizes, different colors. But we all, if they have feathers and wings, we say it is a bird, okay? So we see a bird here. Okay, so that wraps it up for our vocabulary. Now let's use that vocabulary we just learned and put them next to their definitions. What do they mean? How well, how good is your memory? Let's test it. So in this exercise, we have uh, definitions here. We have the first three here. These are the definitions, and these are the words we need to put in the blanks next to the definition. What are the words? Let's review very quickly. First, we have forest, forest, okay? Next one, nest, nest. Next one, climb, climb. The next one here, shelter, shelter. This one here, cave, cave. And this one here, fruit, 
fruit. That's a little difficult, isn't it? Because we have the F and the R. Fruit. Fruit. Okay. So let's take a look at these words and match them with their definitions. Number one, a place with trees and animals. So remember what we talked about at the beginning of this lesson. A place where there are many animals and there's lots of trees. Many things live in this place. Which one fits? Of course, we're looking at this one over here. Forest. It is a forest. Okay. Number two, a safe place to be. A safe place to be. Remember, there are many types of safe places to be. Different animals and people have, call them different things, but they're all, we can all say it's all one thing too. Which one of these will work, right? We could say a cave is a safe place to be, sure. We could say a nest is a safe place to be, but these are both types of shelter, aren't they? So when we say a safe place to be, and we mean all types of safe places to be, that is shelter, okay? Because a cave is a type of shelter. A nest is a type of shelter. A house is a type of shelter. These are all types of shelter. And shelter very basically just means a safe place to be. If you're safe there, it is a shelter. Okay. Number three. Now it's more specific, right? Now we're looking at a more specific type of shelter, a bird's home, right? Not a wild dog's home, not a person's shelter, right? But a bird's home. Which word is associated with bird? Which word is a bird's shelter? It is, of course, nest. So a bird's home is a nest. Okay, good. Let's move on to the next three. Number four, a home in the ground, right? We're talking about in the ground. Now, some animals will dig it, or sometimes it's just there. It's been there for a long time, and an animal will move in there and it's usually underground or in the ground. What type of shelter is it? We call it a cave. A cave. A cave is a home in the ground. Okay? Bears and wild dogs and other large animals will live in a cave. A long, long time ago, human beings lived in caves. Okay. Okay, number five. To grow up like a monkey, to go up. No, I'm sorry, not to grow up, to go up like a monkey. So if you're looking at a tree and you want to go up the tree like a monkey, what are you doing? Of course, we're looking for a verb. And the verb here, of course, is climb. To climb like a monkey, okay? Monkeys climb trees very well. Maybe you climb trees very well. But again, be careful, right? Be careful when, if you climb something. Be careful you don't fall off. So be very careful. Number six, the plant part. So it's the part of a plant that holds the seeds. So it's the part of the plant that holds the seeds inside. And usually they're good to eat, right? Like a banana, uh, an apple, or watermelon. Usually this part is very good to eat. It holds the seeds. What is it? Of course, we're looking at fruit here. So fruit is the part of the plant that holds the seeds. Okay, good. Now let's take a short break and we're going to take a look at the reading passage next. So don't go away. See you soon. Hey kids, welcome back. Are you ready to use those words we just learned? Let's use those words in the reading passage. You ready? Let's go. Okay, here we have a forest has many trees. So a forest has many trees. Of course, there are a lot of trees in the forest, right? Here's a tree, there's a tree, there's a tree. There's many namus, right? <laughs> there's many trees in the forest. Namu is tree, right? So you have mani mani, namu manayo, right? Many, many trees are in the forest. Okay. They all grow close together. Of course, if you have one tree, jagi, and another tree way over there, right? That's not a forest, right? You have to have many trees close together together. So kachi is sale, right? They're all very close together. Okay? So you have many trees that are close together. Many things, many things live in a forest. Of course, things mean animals and plants together, right? There are many different things that live in 
a forest, right? There's one of our words there, a forest. It is a good place, a forest. When we say it, we're talking about a forest. So, it, a forest, is a good place for animals. Sure, it's a good place. There's lots of food. Animals eat plants, right? Animals can also find what? Shelter in a forest. So it's a good place for animals. There is plenty, like I said, there is plenty. Plenty is mana, right? Ma a lot of things, many things, plenty. There is plenty for them to eat. Animals will eat the leaves, they'll eat the fruit. Some animals will even eat the wood in the trees, right? So there is a lot of food for animals to eat in the forest. Bugs, remember bugs? Another word for bug is insect, right? Insects or bugs eat the plants. So they will eat the plants. They eat the leaves. Some of them eat the wood of the trees. Monkeys, right? Here we have another type of animal. What do monkeys eat? Monkeys will eat the fruit from the trees. We all know monkeys love bananas, right? Banana no mochi, no mochoyo for a monkey, right? So uh, monkeys will eat many different kinds of fruit that grow in the forest. Animals can find shelter. This is very important. Uh, tr uh, forests and trees give shelter to animals, right? Animals will find shelter in the trees. They will make a little shelter inside the tree. They'll make nests on top of the tree. Uh, of course, a cave can be anywhere, but sometimes there are caves in the forest. So animals can find shelter in the forest too. Birds, like I said, birds build nests. They build nests on the top of the tree, right? Very high up in the tree so other animals can't get to the birds, okay? So birds will build nests in the trees. Bears, right? We talked about bears before. Bears are big and scary animals, right? Uh, birds sleep inside the caves. So if there's a cave in the forest, maybe there's a bear in there. Be careful about going into caves without an adult, okay? Be careful about that. But bears sleep inside the caves. Okay, what's next? This is a problem, but, but tells us, uh-oh, something's wrong, right? We heard many good things about the forest, but then we see but, but, uh-oh, there's a problem. But the forests are disappearing. That's a little bit of a difficult word. Disappearing means going away. Look at this picture here. This is just ground, dirt. There's no, there aren't any trees in the, in the front of this picture. All those trees have been cut down, they're gone. So these trees are disappearing, the forests are disappearing, they are going away. This is a problem. People cut down trees every day, every day. There are people cutting down trees and taking trees away from the forest. Is this a good thing? Well, of course we need trees, but it could be a bad thing. We have to be careful about how many trees we cut down, right? We use the trees. We means people, right? People, us. People use the trees to make things. We make many different things using the wood in the trees, right? What do we make? Well, we make houses. Houses are made out of trees. If we want to build a house for our shelter, our home, then we need to use trees. We need to use the wood in the trees. We need to use the wood from the trees. What else? We use trees to make boats too. So many boats are made from wood, right? Actually, a lot of things are made from wood. We make houses, we make boats, we make furniture like chaksang, wicha, a chair. Lots of furniture is made from wood also. Paper, we make paper from wood. We use trees in a lot of different ways. So we need trees, but we have to be careful to make sure not all the forests will disappear. 
So, cutting down trees is a problem. Yes, it is a problem. We have to be careful that not all the forests go away. When we cut all the trees in an area like this, where do the animals go? Their home is gone. They have nowhere to find food, nowhere to find shelter. So the animals have no place to live. They need the forest. They, the animals, right? The animals, they need the forest. They need the forest, right? It's their home. It, the forest, is their home. It is, it is their home. So when the, the forest is disappearing, the animals don't have a home, they don't have food, where can they go? It's, it's a problem to cut down the trees. Okay. Trees help us in many ways. There are many ways that trees help us. They keep our air clean, right? So did you know that trees will take in air and they will give off clean air, right? Uh, trees keep our air clean. If you go into the forest and you smell the air, it's very fresh, it's very clean, right? So trees clean the air. Trees are fun to climb too. Of course we can climb, maybe not this tree, but smaller trees with branches, we can climb up the trees. It's fun and it's interesting. Uh, lots of kids like to climb up trees. So what would we do without trees? That's the important question. If there were no trees, what would we do? We would have a hard time to build houses, a hard time to build boats, a hard time to build furniture. Animals wouldn't have a home. The animals would disappear too. We couldn't see the animals. So we need to be careful about how we use trees and forests. Maybe we shouldn't cut all of them down. Maybe we should just cut one here, one there, and leave many other trees standing. So we have to be careful about how many trees we cut down. Okay, let's talk about this story. Now we're going to go over some reading comprehension questions, right? And we're going to see how well you understood the story. The first question, this story is about what was that story about? We have four choices, A, B, C, and D. A is, this story is about climbing trees, or this story is about forests. C, this story is about building houses. D, this story is about eating fruit. Usually when you see this sentence, this story is about, we're looking for a general answer. What is the most general answer? Climbing trees, that's more, I'm sorry, specific. It's more of a specific, narrow answer. Forests, that's wide, isn't it? It's more of a general answer. Building houses, that's a specific thing. Specific, S-P-E-C-I-F-I-C. -E that's a specific thing. That's a narrow, narrow, focused thing. Eating fruit is also specific. Our most general answer is forests here. Is it right? This story is about forests? Yeah, we were talking about forests. We were talking about forests disappear. We cut down the trees in the forest, right? So that we can use them. But forests are good for many things. Animals live there. They find homes. They find food. So we talked about the good things about forests. We also talked about a problem with forests, that people cut down too many trees, so the forests are disappearing. So the answer is, of course, B, forests. These other answers, A, C, and D, they're too specific. Yeah, we talked a little bit about climbing trees, a little bit about building houses, a little bit about eating fruit, but that wasn't the whole story. The whole story was about forests. Okay, so usually you're looking for the more general answer in this type of question. Okay, number two, <clears throat> people cut down. What do people cut down every day? We talked about this, right? Do people cut down caves? 
that's crazy. You can't cut down a cave, right? A cave is a hole in the ground. So it can't be A, right? That's, that's silly. B, do you cut down a nest? Do you go up in the tree and cut down a nest? No, you don't, we don't cut down nests. We don't cut down birds' homes. That would be strange. Do we cut down houses every day? Well, you don't cut down a house. You can destroy a house, but we don't cut down a house. That's really strange. What about a tree? Yes, when people go into the forest and they cut down a tree, that's what they're doing. They're cutting it and it falls down. They cut down a tree. So people cut down trees every day. And that's what we talked about in the story. That's the problem. Too many trees are cut down, the forests disappear. Okay, let's take a look at number three. In a forest, trees beep. Okay, so we're looking for a part of a sentence that talks about trees. A, in a forest, trees are not important. Trees aren't important in a forest? That doesn't sound right. If there were no trees, there would be no forest. So, of course, trees are very important to a forest, right? So that's not correct. B, trees all grow close together. In a forest, trees, trees grow close together. We talked about that, right? If there's a tree over here and another tree chaggy, over there, right? That's not a forest. Many trees are, are together, right? They're kachi, right? Many trees are close together. That's what we are looking for. So B is the right answer. In a forest, trees all grow close together. That's what a forest is. Let's look at C and D for practice. C, in a forest, trees can build nests. Can trees move? <laughs> can trees make things? No, trees don't think. They can't make things. So that's kind of silly, isn't it? D, trees are better than caves. Well, that's opinion. Some people might think trees are better than caves, but other people might think caves are better than trees. So that's not a very good answer. The best answer, of course, in a forest, trees all grow close together. That's what makes a forest. Okay. So we've come to the end. Save the forests. Okay. So how can we save the forests? Of course, one idea, of course, is don't cut down all the trees. Just cut maybe this tree and that tree and leave many other trees standing so new trees can grow where the other trees are cut down. But don't get rid of all the trees. And that's, many companies are doing that now. And that's the best way that we can still use the trees to build houses and boats and furniture, but we also leave enough trees so animals have food and homes and we can enjoy the trees on the weekends. We can still go into the forests. Okay, well that about wraps it up for today. I hope you've learned a lot and I had fun meeting you guys and teaching you guys about forests. We'll see you next time. Take care.